The Bible says, give honor where honor's due. So first of all, our family wants to give honor to you. We are so grateful that you all came, many of you from a great distance, to show respects to our mom, and we are so appreciative, so thank you. I want to give honor to my mama, and she, I want to say that she lived a blessed, rich life that was finished well to the glory of God. Her last breath here on earth was at home, surrounded by the love and prayers of her three girls. My sister, Debbie Baker, Sherry Berry, and myself, Barbara Ann Jeter. We were talking, my sister and I, to her about heaven. We were talking about her seeing her, her Johnny again, her, her, her mama and her daddy, her grandparents, her sisters who had gone on. And we were reading from the book of Revelation. I believe it was what you read, Georgina. And she said, I feel no pain. It's all beautiful. Thank you. And when she passed, we were crying. And my sister, my radiant sister Sherry said, poor mom. And I said, my immediate response was, our mom was not poor. But she was rich, rich in blessings from her first breath until her last. And I explained to her why I thought that, and she said, you're right. So I believe when I finish, you're going to agree with us. So her first blessed breath came as she was born into this world on a cold winter's day, January 20th, 1932, in the midst of the Depression. She was born on a farm to Myrtle and Lovell Miller. They were salt of the earth, good-hearted, hard-working people. And they didn't have running water, no TV. They, they also didn't have electricity or indoor plumbing. No cars. And most people, like us, would say they were poor. They had to wear their shoes till they wore out. But you know what she told me? She said they never thought of themselves as poor. And she said she would not trade her upbringing for anything on this earth. In fact, she felt like she grew up rich. They had animals. They had nature. They had music. They danced. They had each other. They had a big family. And always farm fresh cooking. So even in the midst of the Depression, they never missed a meal. They had fresh vegetables or canned vegetables. They had hogs, they had chickens. So a big family in a small community. She had heaps of cousins, aunts, uncles, and that's a recipe for good memories, deep roots, and strong values built on a foundation of faith. She had a big time, most all the time, with her sisters, her much loved sisters, Maybell, Mary Nancy, and her sister, Edna Kane. They remained close to the end. So from the way I see it, Maddie grew up rich in the midst of the Great Depression. Maddie was richly blessed to learn right from wrong from her grandparents on both the Dennis and the Miller side who lived nearby. Her grandma Miller was a devout Christian and she was a respected midwife. She would ride her horse all around the community and pretty much every child was delivered by her. And the interesting thing was, she was so proud that she never lost one. When she feared that she might lose the mother or the child, she would get on her knees and she would pray. And I believe my mother learned from her in times of trial to look up and to never give up. She aimed to pass on what she learned her many maxims were repeated over and over again. I'm sure you'll remember some of them. Uh, some of them were in this song, but they were pretty is as pretty does. You might as well love to work because everyone has to. If you don't work, you don't eat. <laughs> don't take nothing from the government. You make it on your own. <laughs> have a place for everything and put everything in its place. I haven't learned that yet. <laughs> You can do whatever you put your mind to. Don't worry about anything. Marriage is for life. Live by the good book and the golden rule and honor your father and your mother. 
So Maddie was richly blessed. She got to be married for over 50 years to her good guy, Johnny, who treated Miss Frances, that's what he called her, like a queen. He worked hard so she could be a stay-at-home mom when we were young. He provided not only for her needs, but also for many of her wants. She was blessed to, to have time to keep a clean house and a home-cooked dinner on the table. Her pies, biscuits, and gravy, roast, potato pancakes were some of the best you've ever had. It's in a time where women's leadership abilities, particularly outside of the home, were, are, were not often valued in the marketplace or by their husbands, Maddie was richly blessed to be treated and respected as a full partner with her husband. Together, eventually, with their three girls, their son-in-law, Sam Barry, and two of their grandchildren, Steve Pike and Jason Pike, uh, they built a successful and profitable uh, furniture business, Byway Furniture. It was a mainstay in Louisville, Kentucky for over 40 years, thanks to their many beloved employees and customers. She was blessed with outstanding qualities that made her a successful businesswoman. I was talking with my sister Sherry, and she helped me to remind, remind me of these. Uh, she was courageous, she was determined, she had vision, optimism, discipline, creativity, confidence, boldness, she was decisive, and just old-fashioned hard work. She was also blessed to be an excellent negotiator. You did not want to be on the other side of the negotiation with my mama. <laughs> she was a marketing innovator with fabulous instincts. She also helped scout out and purchase many of the properties they bought. Johnny trusted in his wife's counsel and considered her to be his wisest advisor. Maddie was blessed as well as known for her strong mind, strong opinions, and strong will. Her wit and her grit got her through many a trial that always seemed to turn to gold. When their furniture store and all of its contents burned down early on on my mom's birthday, they had no insurance and they were forced to start all over again. Yet she looked back on the fire as a gift from God. From the ashes, something better was birthed, a new and more profitable business model. Maddie loved to work. In fact, she loved it so much, she said it wasn't work for her. She went to work when I was, she was 42. Uh, for many years, she worked seven days a week. That's a lot. I was so proud of them when they decided, like Chick-fil-A, to close on Sundays. That's a big deal in retail furniture. Many said your business is going to be ruined. But its I don't think it's a coincidence, but God's blessings that that year our profits doubled. They lived most of their life frugally. My mom wanted to be conservative, but my dad did indulge her, especially in their later years with beautiful clothes, homes, fine dining, her favorite cars, including a limousine that my dad himself would chauffeur Maddie around in. <laughs> More notably, though, with their prophets, they were richly blessed to be a blessing to their immediate and extended family, as well as to many in the community. Maddie and Johnny were known for the, their generosity. I remember my mom saying that she never dreamed she would be so successful. She was blessed also with a rich inheritance of faith and honor from her family. She deeply believed in Jesus Christ as her Savior and that the Bible was trustworthy from cover to cover for wisdom and daily living. Every day should be enjoyed and lived to the glory of God and in the practice and power of prayer. Each night, she would pray to our Father and intercede by name for her family members' earthly, physical, and spiritual needs. She was richly blessed that all of her children are Christians. During Maddie's last days on earth, we, we, saw, we showed that we were practicing what she taught us about prayer. We were interceding right by her side morning, noon, and night. Her children's children showed that they also inherited honor by traveling near and far to visit and share their love during their grandma's final days. Also, her sister Edna, her nieces and nephews and cousins came to visit her, including Gina and Lorna, who serenade her. I think you serenade her to heaven. They were 
before she died, she, she came and sang to her. And I loved it because she was tapping her hand, clapping, even while she was bedridden. So that was pretty awesome. Not very many people in this day and age have that blessing. As you know, during COVID, so many have had to die alone. So we're so grateful that she had that. Now, my mama was by no means perfect. She loved to smoke cigarettes. It was a habit that she was only able to kick in her last years and only because she had to. She also had a wee bit of a temper at times and she could tell it like it was to anybody, like nobody's business. One thing you knew about my mama though, you knew where you stood with her. One thing that I loved about her that even on her worst days, including her last 24 hours, she was laughing and she always loved to play her guitar her fiddle or her piano. She was a very unique person with many irks and quirks, but she was also a living example in my book of the good book. It's Proverbs 31 woman in so many ways. I'll just name a few. She was a wife of noble character. Her husband had full confidence in her. She brought him good and not harm all the days of her life. She worked hard, often getting up while it was still dark. She provided food for her family. She considered land and purchased it. She saw that her trading was profitable. She always dressed her best. She was clothed in strength and dignity. She could laugh at the days to come. She spoke with wisdom and faithful instruction was on her tongue. She watched over the affairs of her household and did not eat the bread of idleness. Maddie was blessed to have not one child or grandchild that was birthed, precede her in death, and richly blessed to have a large, fruitful family. I want to give honor, as I believe she would want, to her much-loved firstborn, Debbie Baker. Debbie was our mother's caregiver for the last few years of her life, and what excellent care you gave her, Debbie. And also to my sister, Sherry, because she served my mother so well in her last years. She had eight beloved grandchildren, Steve Pike, Jason Pike, Shannon Corey, Christina Berry Newbar, Ashley Berry Brown, Samuel Berry IV, known as affectionately as John Boy, Justin Jeter, Georgina Francis Jeter, who I named after my dad and my mom. You gotta carry on the positive legacy. And two son-in-law, Samuel Leo Berry the third, and Charles Early Jeter, my husband. And she died on my husband's birthday. And what he said really comforted me because she, he said, now they share the same birthday. So June 25th is her eternal birthday because we believe that to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. So she just started to live on January 25th. One sister, Edna Kane, her aunt, Catherine Clark, and a myriad of nieces and nephews that she loved so much that includes Sandra and Keith Dennis, Lisa French, and Glenn Kane, as well as many cousins. I wanna charge all of her family, that anything good, excellent, praiseworthy that you saw in her, let it live on in you. So the Bible says, charm is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman who fears the Lord shall be praised. Give her the award she has earned and let her good works bring her praise. In sum, the, strict, the scripture instructs us in Proverbs 31, 28, that her family rise up and call her blessed. As a final act of honor, I would ask that if you count yourself as a part of Maddie's family, to rise up to your feet now. Thank you for joining with me as we call Maddie Frances Miller Baker richly blessed for her first 
breath to her last. <laughs> 